Happy Wednesday, everybody. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean, and I'm really looking forward to guiding you through today's yin yoga practice. Today's yoga practice is meant to help you just find your inner calm to relax away any anxieties that you're feeling. <laughs> really looking forward to just relaxing and breathing and feeling so much just lighter and better after today's class. I definitely recommend, especially if you are feeling really just like stressed and your body is showing that through you by being tense or uncomfortable, to gather as many props as you need for today's class. Have a couple blocks around, even think about having your strap nearby, just in case you want to use it. Uh, we do have some, some postures that are gonna re require a little bit of reach. I know when I practiced them earlier, one side was great, and the other side I thought, I can use a strap. This is yin yoga, so it is meant to be a more passive form of yoga. Normally I do not encourage a lot of prop use in class. My other training is Bikram yoga in which there are no props. In general, you just wanna do the best that your body can today. As long as you can breathe, you can do this yoga with me. Thank you for coming. We're gonna start in Sukhasana in easy pose in our mats uh, in about four minutes. Use this time to, if you're here, get up, get away from your desk, come into your space, make it as relaxing as possible. Maybe changing the lighting Maybe, maybe you two are obsessed with some aromatherapy during yoga. I'm starting to run low here. If you have an opportunity to put on some quiet music, I love listening to some really gentle music when I practice yin by myself. My favorite is to uh, put on some ambient music. That way I'm not really trying to sing along or being distracted away from the stretch that we're creating. I do want you to work today to create some noticeable stretches. They might feel a little bit uncomfortable and we're gonna find a nice long hold within that stretch. Today's holds are only gonna be about three minute max, so a little shorter than usual. It's gonna feel a little more flowy. We're gonna have a great time. I'm so glad you came. Look at me. Quasi-organized. Okay, two minutes till we get started. Maybe have some water, maybe have some tea, have some coffee. Make sure you're dressed in something comfortable so you don't find yourself messing with your clothes. Just working to eliminate as many distractions as possible. One minute till we get started. Gently make your way down to the floor. Start to relax your mind, relax your breath. Take a moment to thank yourself for coming. Right before we get started, if you do notice any particular points of tension in your body, if you want to give yourself a couple stretches that you know feel good for you, go for it. Hi. <laughs> Just in case you're tuning in exactly on time, welcome. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean. And today's yin yoga practice is all about finding our inner calm and just helping to relax our mind and our body, our breath, so that we can say adios to some anxiety. 
All right, getting started right here in Sukhasana and easy pose. You don't have to have your feet folded in as close as I do. Maybe you prefer to have the other leg on top. This is just about being as comfortable, as relaxed, just starting to ground your sit bones into the floor. Maybe you even take a shake of your shoulders. Just shake all those spilkies. Shake out any expectations that you have for your asanas, for your postures today. Start to slow your breath down and think about closing your eyes. For again, we're working to find some nice long holds. And remember that if your eyes are moving, your mind is moving. So if you're looking around and you're seeing a lot of distractions, maybe two or four legged friends, maybe just some things in front of you that you want to tend to, take this time to close your eyes. And whether your eyes are open or closed, really slow your breath down. Use your inhale to just be aware of how your body is feeling today. Start a scan from the top of your head all the way down to your toes. Just notice if you're feeling any particular tension. Maybe you're furrowing your brow or tightening your jaw. Maybe your shoulders have drawn up towards your ears or you're squeezing your glutes. And if you notice any of those things, work to, within your exhale, find a little extra space in those tight places. We'll spend one more minute here just focusing on our breath. See if you can make your exhale a little bit longer than your inhale. Make sure you're breathing all the way down to the bottom of your belly and not just up at the top of your chest. Let your breath be the number one for today. Let the postures be second. So if you notice that you come into a stretch that's so intense that you're limiting your breath and it comes back to just your chest, take a step back to where you can bring that breath to your whole body. All right, last big inhale. And on your exhale, feel free to shake it out. You might even want to kick those legs out in front of you. Take a moment to bob your knees or windshield wipe your feet. And next up, we're going to come into half stump, prepping us for some squats that are coming up next. We'll just do half stump very briefly. If the first squat sounds like something you don't want to do, you get to just draw both of your legs up at the same time and you'll do full stump. So. I'm going to look like I'm doing the opposite of you today. It's just so important while we do a posture like stump or wind removing that you start with your right leg so we can work from the ascending colon to the descending colon and then our transverse colon. We don't want to work backwards or else you can block things up. So draw that right heel in as close to your glute as possible. Maybe you even need to shift the weight just a little bit. Work to get both sit bones down and bring your knee into the crook of your elbow. If that feels too tight for you, you can always bring your hands to your knee and just work to lift that chest up. Find some relaxation of shoulders away from your ears. Either find a gaze of one spot on the floor in front of you and close your eyes and you can relax that extended left leg as much as you want to. Maybe it's already starting to wake up and say hello and then change. Extend your right leg out in front of you. Draw that left leg in. Maybe you need to bring the right foot a little bit over towards the side instead of straight in front, and that's okay. Once again, get those sit bones ground on the floor. Relax your shoulders away from your ears, either finding that engagement of that upper body as that knee draws in towards your chest. You really feel it down through the side of the body, or maybe a little bit more relaxed with your hands on your shins. Take one more big breath here. And next up, we're going to come into a squat. If squat doesn't feel good for you, if you don't have any supportive um, props, you can always come into a double leg, just a full stump. Otherwise, we're going to stand ourselves up, take your time. You can keep your hands on the floor if you need to. Find a 45 degree angle with your feet. Maybe your heels don't quite come to the floor as we begin our practice, or Maybe you already choose to make use of your prop. Having something that you can actually sit on, 
underneath of your glutes can allow you to find those heels flat on the floor to find a little bit of a openness with the upper body. We're gonna spend two minutes right here. So remember, if you need to, your hands can be on the floor. Your heels don't have to be on the floor just yet. Work to find that stillness, deep hip opener happening here. Take that total body scan from head to toe and just notice where you can relax more. Are you bringing a lot of extra tension into your feet, into your toes? Especially if you're sitting on a prop, think about relaxing that extra grip that you might have of your feet onto the floor. See though, if you can apply equal pressure throughout the foot. Notice if you were rolling to the inside or to the outside. Place all four corners of the feet down. We have one minute left right here before we're gonna come up into a wide leg forward fold. Maybe you can bring your breath in this last minute to the back side of the body. Feel those back ribs expand on your inhale and gently contract on the exhale. Last two breaths. On your next exhale, press into your feet, lift those hips up towards the ceiling. Bring the weight into the balls of your feet to turn your heels to the wall behind you so that your feet um, are either like a number 11 or you can create a little bit of a pizza toe for your foot or like a, a wedge like when you're trying to stop when skiing I think I don't know it's been a while since I went skiing maybe you can reach those hands all the way down towards the floor maybe you want to use a prop in front of you we're focusing on the stretch that we're creating on the back of the legs and the hamstring so feel free to relax that upper body as much as feels good maybe you can even come a little bit further down towards the floor. If you need to, you can take a slight little bend of your knees. Otherwise, really think towards, instead of sending your hips ooh, towards the back of the room, starting to shift the weight forward to stack your hips on top of your heels. And bring in a little bit more weight into the toes. We got one more minute right here. And then we're gonna come back into our squat. Find some relaxation with your neck. Allow your crown of your head to hang heavy towards the floor. See if you can create some length in your spine for these last couple breaths. And then you can keep your hands on the floor or bring them to the floor if they were not there already. Heel toe your feet in a little bit closer and keep those toes pointing out this time. Heels turning in. We'll lower ourselves down once more for a squat. Maybe you choose to use your prop. Maybe you want to challenge yourself a little bit more this time. Not using a prop, I feel the stretch a lot more through the ankles, through the back of the ankles, big time in the hips and also in the quads. Work to come towards your stillness, stillness of the mind and of the body and that just gentle flow relaxation of your breath. Maybe you can even sink down with those hips just a little bit lower, but no need. Remember, if things become really uncomfortable, you can come out and find a new place to hold. 
there's no need to go any deeper than you find yourself right now. We've got one minute left here. Focus on your breath. How many does it take to get to the end of this minute? Once again, release your hands down to the floor or your props and your hips up towards the ceiling. Heel toe your feet back in this time, side by side from each other. So once again, you might need to take that bend of your knees. Better to have your belly sandwiched on your thighs with the weight in your heels so you're supported with belly on your thighs than to have a lot of space here and extra rounding. That's gonna just bring some some unnecessary tension into the back. So feel free to use that prop under your hands. Keep the weight in your heels. And we're just working to find that stretch on our hamstrings. Notice if you brought any tension into your upper body, I know I did. Ask yourself, am I really relaxed or is there something I could do to relax a little bit more? We've got one minute left right here, our last standing posture of the day. Hey, take your time. We're going to make our way back down to the floor. As you get there, take a seat on your glutes. Ooh, go ahead, fold your right leg in, kick your left leg out. We're going to come into half dragonfly. You can open that left leg out to the side as much as feels good for you today. Get both of your sit bones ground on the floor and find a little bit of a forward hinge from your hips. Try not to turn towards that bent leg. Keep your weight towards the center and you can hinge forward as much as feels good for you. Option to relax your head down as well. We're focusing on the stretch that we're creating in those legs. Chinese medicine also believes that a lot of our tension and stress is stored in our hips. So we're really working to open those hips today. One of the most repeated phrases in Bikram is happy spine, happy life. And frequently if our hamstrings at the back of our legs are really tight, that can lead us to having some discomfort in our lower back. So we're working to open the legs. We're about halfway through. This is one of our first three minute holds of the day. You're just working to be on the edge of a noticeable stretch. I know it takes some time to really work towards the stillness that yin yoga asks for. If this is a new 
practice to you, you might find yourself fidgeting or giving yourselves reasons that you can fidget. Like, oh, I have an itch. Let me just scratch that. Oh, this is out of place. Let me just fix it. So I challenge you, if you do notice an itch, see if you can scratch it with your mind's eye. See if you can release it with your breath. Sometimes I think that, this is weird, but that yin yoga is like great practice if I ever need to hide in the woods somewhere. So what are you hiding from today? Maybe if we're really still right now, all the things that have stressed us out just won't be able to find us later. Do that total body scan once more. Where can you bring a little bit more relaxation? Where did the tension creep back in and take it out for your last couple breaths on this side? Take your time, walk yourself back in. We're gonna go ahead and switch those legs. You need to shake it out a little in between. Do what makes your body feel best. If this is too much on your extended leg because your hamstrings are so tight, maybe allowing that toe to fall inward can relieve a little bit of pressure on the back of the leg and bring the stretch more towards the outside of your thigh. Maybe you wanna sit yourself up on an amazing prop that you have. Being a little bit lifted, especially when our legs are extended, can help to relieve some of the pressure and tension that placing our heels on the floor creates. So as you're being quiet and still, what does that feel like in your body? Do you feel any trembling or shaking? Staying in these long holds is meant to work into our bones, our ligaments, tissue, the fascia, and just create new awakenings, awareness, connections. With time through our breath, flexibility will also increase. So enjoy any involuntary twitches, trembles, or shakes. Those new connections that you're stimulating right now. One minute left. Do that total body scan once again. Check in on your tense spots. Bring that awareness and the thought of relaxation. Did you bring a little extra tension that you released when I mentioned it? I know I did.
enjoy one more big breath here. And use your exhale to lift yourself up. Let's go ahead and bend both of our knees. You can bring your hands behind you. Take a moment, just windshield wipe your legs. Maybe you even roll gently onto the opposite hip. Next up, we have butterfly. You might want to have two props nearby for a butterfly. As we bring the soles of our feet together, and it's really your choice if you want to go for a little bit more bound angle with everything really in close to the center line of your body, which probably feels better for uh, those of us with really open hips, or if you really want to stick with more of a butterfly. Find a little forward hinge of your hips. If you really feel a lot of challenge, like you just can't relax your legs, bring those props in and apply a little pressure with the back of your legs into your prop. You can hinge forward as much as you want to. I'm gonna bring this closer in because you gotta find what feels good for your body today. So maybe you try them both. Maybe it even feels good to bring a little stretch to your back to fold forward. Keep those hips gently behind you though. So you're taking a tilt of your pelvis forward. So you can enjoy a little bit of that nice flat back at the back. Relax your head as much as feels good. Slowly, gently begin to lift yourself up on your next exhale. Let's move these props out of the way. Next up, we're going to come into either pigeon or sleeping swan. So pigeon is the one where you're going to extend one leg back and then turn to the top of your mat. It's your choice if you want to have that heel in close to the center line of your body, or if you're going, if you're feeling a little bit more open and it works for you to have your shin parallel with the top of your mat. We don't want to have our weight in the glute of the leg that's forward. You actually want to, whew, I'm gonna fold that leg in for some support. You actually want to have that glute lifted off the floor and be working to bring that opposite hip towards the floor. And you have a choice to stay lifted here in pigeon or relax yourself down towards the floor for some sleeping swan. Even relaxing your head, maybe even bringing your head into the crook of your arms. Notice if you shifted the weight back towards that front leg glute. We're hanging out right here for three more minutes. Feel free to use your hand as a prop to keep your head relaxed. Still working on the stretch that's happening in the lower half of our body. So relax the upper half of your body as much as you possibly can. Once again, start that scan from the top of your head all the way down to your toes. Relax your head, relax your shoulders. Relax your back. You can even allow that belly to hang out if you need to.
Back to your nice, slow breath. If you're asleep and swan down on the floor, take your time, lift yourself back up into a proud pigeon, and then bring the weight into your glutes. We're just gonna turn over to the opposite side. So take your time to get there. We got three minutes from right now. Remember, both sides of our body are not the same, so no expectations for what's to come on the opposite side. Maybe it feels better to stay more in an upright pigeon. Maybe you can get deeper into your sleeping swan. Whatever it is that you're going to hold on to, find it right now. Relax that upper body as much as you possibly can. Scan your body from head to toe. Bring that relaxation where it is needed. Back to your super slow breath. Exhale longer than inhale. Last couple breaths right here. Hopefully now that we're more than halfway through today's practice, you find coming into these relaxed breaths a little bit easier than when we first started class. To so doing that total body scan and noticing where your tension is and finding that relaxation a little bit sooner. 
Once again, bring your hands to the floor. If you were a beautiful sleeping swan, become a proud pigeon. Next up is gonna be child's pose. Come into it however feels best for you. I'm gonna apply some pressure into my back leg so I can lift myself up. Bring both knees to the floor. You can open them as wide as you want to and send your hips back towards your heels. Allow your head to fall down heavy, below heart's level. We'll hang out here for two minutes. If it feels really uncomfortable for you to have your arms super extended, if that's too much on your shoulders, you can always generously bend your elbows as much as you need to. Walk your hands in if they were extended. Bring them underneath of your shoulders. Press yourself up to a seated position. And then just shift the weight over. Release your legs from underneath of you. Send them in front of you. We'll take a moment in staff pose with those legs extended. So once again, if your hamstrings are really tight, if it's uncomfortable for you to have those legs extended, find a little bit of a bend in your knees. Take a moment to walk those glutes back behind you to find that forward hinge of your lower back. Instead of rounding and reaching forward towards your back, you can be here in this rounding position and then just walk those glutes back. Bring your belly towards your thighs. Hanging out in staff pose for just one minute. I have my fingers close by my hips to be a little more um, of a prop. And you flex your toes back to your face and take three more breaths. Great, enjoy your exhale. Feel free to shake those shoulders out. Next up, we're going to lay down on our backs. You might want um, your strap for this next one. And of course I left my strap right over here. So I'm just gonna calm down it. Okay, so we have two different options for this next posture. You can either enjoy our standard spine twist, or I'm going to talk you through how you can come into cat's tail. So lower yourself down onto your back and then gently extend your arms out to the side. Roll over onto your hips and allow both knees to hang heavy over to one side. Relax and release the opposite shoulder to the floor. And you can hang out here in your spine twist. If you'd like to go a little bit further, you might need to hook that lower foot with your strap. You're gonna take your top hand and gently trace down, sorry, while well, I'm taking my right hand because I'm rolled over onto my right side and I'm tracing down my left leg to draw my right leg up. Yes, and then I'm reaching down with my left hand to try to grab hold of my right foot. And you can either look up towards the ceiling or look over the shoulder of the foot that is underneath. And if it was really hard to grab that foot, you can always use that strap to help make it happen. Remember, one side of the body might be more open than the other. Maybe you even want to put a prop underneath of that top leg. Come 
back to your super slow breaths. We'll spend one more minute here. If you separated your legs for a cat tail pulling, go ahead, bring those knees back together, gently roll over onto your back. Feel free to move that strap. Maybe you already want to put the strap on your opposite foot. And then gently roll over to the side that you might have the strap on. Relax the opposite shoulder to the floor. You can either extend your arms out and hang out here once again in a spine twist. Maybe even in the spine twist, you want to put a block between your knees to have a better stacking of your hips. Maybe it's hard to get that lower leg to the floor and you put a block under that opposite leg. Or maybe you're going to come into cat pulling tail, reaching for that lower leg foot. Finding that reach for your top leg. I cannot reach that lower leg foot on this side. So I'm just going to use that strap to find that extra bit of stretch. Keep both shoulders to the floor, either gazing up towards the ceiling or increasing the depth of the stretch by looking over the right shoulder. One minute left right here. Take your time, release those feet, release your straps, slowly roll back over onto your back. And let's draw both knees in towards your chest. You can either hang out here in knees to chest pose, maybe with those knees really nice and wide. I want you to really work to keep that tailbone, the lower part of your back, the lower part of your glutes towards the floor. And you have the option to send your heels up towards the ceiling for happy baby. Maybe you even want to put a strap around your feet just to help you hang out here in happy baby. But I want you to not sacrifice that lower back on the floor. So don't roll yourself up to get those legs closer towards your face. Really glue that lower back down. Even if it means that your knees aren't as close in towards your chest, if you want your knees in more towards your chest, come more into knees to chest pose. So many delightful options. Relax the back of your head and your neck. Get as much of your neck vertebrae on the mat as possible. We'll take three more breaths. On your next exhale, gently release those feet back down to the floor. Extend them all the way out in front of you. Inhale your arms up overhead. Option to keep those arms straight, or you can bend 
at your elbows and grab hold of the opposite elbow. We're gonna come into banana pose. So keeping your hips at the center of the mat, walk your legs over to the right as much as feels good for you today, and then bring your upper body to the right as well. So you're creating a big stretch throughout the left side of your body. If you don't really feel the stretch so much in the lower half, you can always cross your left leg over the right. If you did so and that feels too intense, let it go. Maybe cross your right leg over the left. See how that feels. Come into your stillness. We'll take five breaths here. If you crossed your legs, uncross your leg. You can walk those heels in itty bitty steps one at a time. Come back to center. Keeping those hips at the center this time, walk your legs all the way over to the left. And then walk your upper body. Find that little wiggle over to the left as well. You can keep your feet relaxed side by side. You can cross one foot on top of the other. Find what feels good for you. We're gonna hang out here once again for five more breaths. Focusing on the stretch that you're creating on the right side of your body. Relax your shoulders, relax your head, relax your glutes, relax your heels, or heel if only one's touching. As much on the floor as possible. If you crossed your legs, uncross them, walk them back to the center of your mat. Take your time as you gently bring your arms back down by your side and set yourself up. Make any adjustments that you need as we come into our final savasana. Either heels touch and toes fall open with arms close by your side for a traditional savasana, or feel free to open your legs or open your arms as wide as you want. If your lower back is hurting, maybe even bending your knees getting that lower back relaxed on the mat. Option to even bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. As you just continue to notice your breath, coming back to your stillness, giving your body time to truly allow your practice to sink in. Savasana is a good reminder, a good closing posture. any class savasana would encourage stillness but i hope that you bring the same or even more concentrated stillness to this savasana as you did to every other posture that we enjoyed today if you find here at the end of practice that other worldly thoughts are coming into your head of things you might need to do or tend to let them know hey I hear ya. I'll be with you in just a sec. This is my me time. I got a meeting with myself and my breath. 
And if you still find yourself distracted by your thoughts, even come towards counting the length of your inhale, counting the length of your exhale. Just making an effort to be as present in the moment in each breath as possible. And so enjoy as much stillness as we possibly can. You're encouraged to stay here in this final savasana for as long as feels good for you. If you would like to close up class together, take your time, make your way back to a seated position of your choice. And as you get there, if it feels right, bring your hands to heart center and namaskar. With your thumbs touching on your sternum, tuck your chin to your chest. Can you bring a smile to your face as you honor yourself and thank yourself for making this time today for your practice. If you have any questions or concerns about anything that I said or we did today, I hope you'll reach out. If you have any particular pains or stresses that you would love to see a class about, let me know. So you see me again, I hope that you and I continue to think good thoughts, to speak good words, to eat good foods, and do good deeds to nourish yourself from the inside to the out. Bring your thumb up to your third eye, your drishti. Lift your heart, your face, your elbows up towards the ceiling, ground your sit bones into the floor, and know that the light within me honors and sees and is so thankful for the light within you. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste.